Okay, so following on from the advent of code and solving it with JavaScript, I have also given myself the challenge of trying to solve it with uh, JQ, uh, potentially Z80, if I can. Um, now I've already solved the problem from a kind of logical perspective and I already have the answers in um, the advent of code. Um, don't watch this video if you want to do it yourself, obviously. Um, I'm going to talk through how I'm going to solve it using uh, JQ. So I'm a big fan of JQ. Uh, I made my own tool for uh, doing it in the browser. Um, JQ is a JSON manipulation tool uh, for the command line, and it's for data transformation. Um, but I like to use it for things that aren't data, data transform. And I did 16 days, so uh, the, uh, 16 times two, my brain's just literally switched off. Uh, I want to say 32, but yeah, 32. 32, day, 32 solutions with, um, with JQ last year. And it got to the point where um, the processing power for the complex maths that I was trying to pull off just couldn't be done. Uh, and I, I, I got to like the end of the year and I just figured it was time to stop. Anyway, so um, going back to this this problem, um, again, don't watch if you don't wanna know the answers already. Um, I've already solved this in JavaScript, so I know what the solution should be, um, but I need to write it in uh, JQ. So um, this is kind of the input set of numbers, but actually uh, I can pop it open to, oh, no, I can't find the original uh, download. I have actually downloaded uh, the file. Um, and uh, so the, the task, let's go and grab the file, uh, one.input2020. Um, I'm gonna drop this into JQ, uh, JQ term, and that's gonna spit it out as text. So that is not, um, if I do length, um, it's not JSON at this point. Uh, so I need to um, slurp this in. Um, so I have 200 numbers at this point. Um, and I think that's all good. Okay, cool. Um, if this was, yeah, actually before I was kind of converting to numbers, but um, I can call a function called uh, combinations um, and it will generate every combination of uh, pairs of numbers here. So this is the number of results I want. I can do kind of three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. Um, and this is gonna combine every single number. So I actually end up with four, oh, let's turn that into an array. Yeah, 40,000, so that's literally uh, 200 times 200. Um, and that kind of works. So I can then just do uh, map select, and I do dot zero plus uh, dot zero one equals 2020. And then, oops, it's kind of reacting a little bit slow because it's really chunking through data. And you can see that I have duplicates here, but that is the answer. Um, and I should be able to do uh, dot zero, whoops, times dot one, should I be able to do that? Uh, oh, I need to flatten that out. There we go. So 63616 and is not the answer. What do I add them or multiply them? I multiply them. Day one. Oh no, there we go, 63616. That's cool, that works um, and I thought about trying to make this uh, three. As soon as I go to three, I think what you'll find, let's just see. I very much doubt this will work, but I thought I could just do this. Um, but you'll see the results not changing. And the reason for that, if I just bring my dev tools into the window, is because it's run out of memory. And the reason it's run out of memory is because 200 times 200 times 200 is 8 million records. And uh, JQ is then running uh, this code 8 million times and I'm just sat here waiting and it just can't fit into memory. So um, I need to switch to the command line um, 
and I need to completely change the method I'm using. So uh, this is the solution. So I'm going to um, slurp the file in. I don't need the raw access. Okay. Um, and I'm going to use NodeMon to kind of repeatedly call that. And I might need to um, nuke that occasionally because it might go into an infinite loop. Um, so yeah, let's also do that quiet so we can get the output. Okay, um, we need just like the, the JavaScript uh, solution, I had three loops. So um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a store as a variable, um, storing the source as a variable. And uh, I'm then going to create an object. So dot source equals dot source. And uh, if I sh and I'm going to do this extra thing. Uh, so I need three counters. So I'm going to do i naught uh, j k, and I'm going to do um, result is null. And I think that's all I want. Um, and I'm just going to pipe that into the output so you can see it. So you can see it. Did that work? Oh, no, I'm doing the wrong file. B, there we go. All right, that blew up. Um, why did that blow up? That blew up because... It's a great start, isn't it? Um, Let's get rid of that and just check. Oh, no, that's not even working. Was it raw or slurp I was using? Oh, sod. No, it was slurp. File. Right. Let's just run this manually. Debugging command line. Uh, expected a pipe somewhere. Got the right file, I'm in the right directory. Let's just do dot. Okay, that works. Oh, okay, dot as dollar source and then dollar source. Let's try that. Okay, that works. Let's put our code back in. Oh, sod, I lost my code. All right, dollar as dollar source. Um, I name my variables in JQ with a dollar just so I know that they're variables. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is create a brand new object. Dot source is dollar source. Doesn't like that. Oh, that's why. There you go, blimey O'Reilly. Okay, so uh, I is naught J, K, J, K, because we've got three loops and we're gonna have res, and that's gonna be null. Um, and then we're gonna pipe it through uh, loop one. And def loop one, and we semicolon to end that, and we're just gonna spit it back out. Cool, okay, right. Let's get no more watching that again. So loop one is going to um, set i to naught, okay, which it already has, so it doesn't need to do that. And we're gonna use uh, until, and until takes two arguments. Uh, this thing needs to be until this is true and do this. And uh, this is gonna be until um, i is equal to 200 or dot res is not equal to null. There okay. So if we pipe that through, it should all run along. Um, and actually now what we're gonna do is go into uh, the next loop. So we're gonna call loop two. And what's going into this, if I just do debug and then pipe, um, you'll see that we're just, oh wait, look, res. That's only calling once. Why is that only calling once? I'm sure we'll find out in a second. Res. No. Oh, we'll work it out in a minute. Um, let's 
so I can debug what I was going to say. Oh yeah, so the contents of uh, that's going into the loop is this this entire structure, and it just gives me a bit more kind of a uh, of a, a variable to play with, and, and an object that has properties and so on. Um, so we're going to do loop two, and we're going to pass in. Um, well, I don't. I, I need to pass in. Uh, well, I don't need to pass in anything actually. Um, I can do def loop two. And uh, what I want to do is reset the uh, J variable to zero, but actually it doesn't have to be zero. It doesn't need to be the same value as I. It can actually be dot I plus one. So we can kind of move forward through the array. So we can capture that. Dollar J, dollar J. And then we're gonna do something here. Um, and we also need to increment I. So we're gonna do uh, pipe and then we're gonna do I equals dot i equals dot i plus one. Yeah. Oh, inside the loop? No, inside the loop. There we go. Loop and then pipe. There we go. That looks right. Uh, yep, yep, that's good. That's good. That's good. Okay, cool. Still compiles. Um, loop two is going to look very similar to loop three. Uh, loop uh, one. So let's get rid of that. Um, I'm going to call a third loop, and this is going to be j plus 1, and then we're going to do uh, j plus j1, and then we want to, if we hit the 200th value, we're going to kind of exit out. I think that looks okay. Um, there's one change that we can make to that in a moment, but we won't do that just yet. Um, I like to have my semicolons at the end. And then we're going to do loop 3 is the one that's actually going to look for... Um, the three numbers adding up. So I didn't even explain what, what the third task was. Basically, find the three numbers that add up to 2020. And that's our answer there. So we're looking for that number. Um, so here we're going to do K. Let's change J to oops, K. So that's going to all increment. Um, and then we need a test here to say if dot I don't know we need brackets but whatever dot source dot i plus j plus k equals two equals twenty twenty then we're gonna do uh, dot res equals and then this value multiplied together instead of ad added and else we're going to give it the whole object back so it can keep still doing the this thing and we have no extra loops so we're just going to increment k so if k is equal to 200 or res is equal to not equal to null, then we're gonna break, then we're gonna break and we break. Oh, actually there's the value. And here we're just gonna do dot res. So six seven eight triple seven eight four six seven eight triple there we go. Okay, cool, worked. Um and I'm not showing through memory because these are kind of streaming loops. Uh, they work. So I think we can do an optimization just here. We can say um, if dot source uh, dot i plus dot source dot j is greater than 2020 or 2019, then uh, do nothing else loop call loop three uh, end and then do that so that yeah there you go that was a lot faster so if i yeah it's a lot faster because we're not checking values that would never meet our uh, range so there we go uh, jq um i need to put in i forgot to put that in it looked completely different it was um what do we have we had uh, combinations two map select dot uh, plus dot uh, equals 
0.820, and then we chose the first one, and then we piped it, and then we did uh, dot zero times dot one. Let's see if that worked. Um, A, that did not work. Uh, oh, what have we done here? This looks, let's get rid of this bit. Mm -hmm. We're slurping, what the hell? Right, oh, no. Sod. Oh, that's why, that needs to be an array. There we go. So that's one. So we got combinations, which is fine with small lists. It's not fine with a list of 200. You need to check and consider how much memory that's building. Um, because it's this doesn't stream to the next function until it builds the entire array. Um, so this is kind of a lazy way of doing it, but it you know when it's small enough, it works fine. Um, and then this is uh, a few things going on here. I'm not even sure we need that first bit. I think we can get away with doing this. Yeah. So um, I tend to, when I'm doing complex stuff like this, then building an object and kind of passing that all around is is the sanest thing to do. Um, and then, yeah, we're calling loop one. And uh, basically the object that comes back, I can access directly using the, um, the dot expression. Um, and it gives me the res, which is no longer null. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching.